Hi, I'm Sec Engineers. Welcome to this week's episode of Way of the Future. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at a different way of solving the Kubernetes security policy management challenge. We're going to be looking at an awesome tool called Kyverno and how it can help you secure your Kubernetes cluster with its policy as code capabilities. Stay tuned. <laughs> If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter, where we are going to be posting constantly useful content around cloud native security, Kubernetes security, DevSecOps, AppSec, and many more interesting topics. Now, I don't need to tell you that Kubernetes is a complicated subsystem, and you need some kind of security or policy management tool that helps you actually automate the kind of workloads and the kind of, uh, the kind of resources that are deployed in Kubernetes. And that's why you need a policy management tool. Now, one of the things that you could have done in the past is look at a tool like OPA or something like that, which is an open policy agent, which is a really powerful tool. It's not only in the past, you can do that even now. But the tool that I discovered recently was a tool called Kyverno, and I really was impressed by what it could do. Let's look at what it can do. The rest of this segment is going to be a quick explanation of Kyverno and a demo of what it can do, a small demo of what Kyverno can do. Now, this is being launched as a complete course on AppSec Engineer, uh, along with our massive set of Kubernetes security courses that we keep adding all the time. We've, uh, we're going to be constantly coming up with new content around Kubernetes and on cloud security and so on. So if you are interested in some amazing hands-on learning, do check out appsecengineer.com. Now, Kyverno is something that I came across uh, probably two, three months ago. It was actually, it's been around for a while, but I had not come across it. I'd seen it in a couple of places, but I'd not really played around with it. And then I started play around, playing around with it. And I found this to be really awesome. I found Kyverno to be an amazing policy management tool. And let me explain why. One of the things that I really like about Kyverno is that it's, first of all, it's purpose driven. It's meant only for Kubernetes, right? It's not meant for APIs and stuff like that. It's meant for Kubernetes. It's meant to be for Kubernetes, by Kubernetes, for Kubernetes, off Kubernetes, right? So it's, it's really a very Kubernetes specific uh, policy engine. Right now, the the benefit of using Kyverno, which I think is a pretty big benefit, because I have seen a lot of people using Kyverno, and the reason they use it is because you don't need to learn another language when you're doing Kyverno. Right? You don't need to learn Rego and stuff like that. You can write, you can compose your policy definitions with YAML itself in the native Kubernetes YAML. If you are comfortable with it, then this is a great way to go about it because you don't have to learn Rego and then do a bunch of uh, back and forth between Rego and then YAML and deploying it and things like that. The other thing that Kyverno supports it, that is that it supports three actions and all these three actions are pretty cool. One is it supports validating actions, which is essentially validating webhooks. It also supports mutating policies. Like, for instance, if you want to add something when a pod is being launched or you want to add resource limitations to pods that are being launched into a particular namespace, all of this are supported by Kyverno. Kyverno also supports an additional type of abstraction called generators, which means that when you are loading a particular pod, you can generate some code or you can generate a network policy on the fly and things like that. So not only can you do validating and mutating, you can also do what Kyverno calls generating. So it's really interesting stuff what you can do with Kyverno. So this is what a Kyverno policy kind of looks like in terms of its structure, right? So it has a policy, it has a rule. Now the rule can match or exclude. So you can match based on multiple things. You can say match based on name, match based on namespace, match based on name, namespace, label, user role, group, all of these things. You can match based on multiple parameters, right? So you can match based on all this, or you can also exclude based on this. So let's say you want it to apply to everything but this. Uh, you can do that with Kyverno also. So it's not that it can only do match, it can also do exclude. You can have multiple selectors. So you can match based on multiple parameters and you'll see that in the example that we're rolling out. The other nice thing that I like about Kyverno is that you can do policies that can apply at a cluster or you can do policies that can apply on a namespace. Just like you do cluster role binding and role binding, Kyverno has policies that you can work at a cluster level and at a 
namespace level also. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is deploy my label policy for the namespace. So let's look at our label policy for the namespace. So the label policy essentially looks for the purpose label. Uh, every time you create a namespace, you need to have a purpose label. If it doesn't have a purpose label, it's going to reject it, right? So this is more a consistency and querying thing. So I'm going to create this in my cluster. So it's going to create a cluster policy, right? So you can do kubectl get cpol and you actually get your list of cluster policies. And you can see that this is background true and it will check whether the namespace has other namespaces have labels called purpose and it will report it as an audit finding. So the action is set to enforce. Now let's create a namespace called prod. It will say obviously it will not allow it obviously because there's no purpose label. So the purpose label is not there. So obviously it's going to fail. You'll see that it's much easier to write rules. I found it to be, at least personally, I found it much easier to write rules than I found with OPA and things like that. So uh, now if I create a namespace with the label, so if I create the namespace with the correct label, prod ns with the label, you'll see that I've created a namespace purpose prod. Now it should work, right? So I'm going to create this. I'm going to create this. And it created the namespace, so kubectl get ns you will see that we have our prod namespace if you see kubectl describe ns prod you will see that we have a label called purpose and the purpose is set to prod now we are going to create another uh, label or another policy in the prod namespace where each pod that you schedule into this particular namespace needs to have a label called scope right so we have you need to have a label called scope the scope label needs to be prefixed with prod dash. Scope label needs to be prefixed with prod dash. So if I try and create a deployment within that prod, uh, prod namespace, with just this, it says, sorry, you need to have a scope label. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to create a new deployment within this namespace, prod namespace, and I'm going to add a label called prod dash nginx and you will see that it works just fine it works because we have the necessary label called scope now we are going to add some security uh, checks to this name to this namespace right now let's look at the let's look at the policy that we've written here right it's going to check whether the run as non root is set to true right in the init containers and the basic containers right so that's basically what we are going to do that is one of the rules that i've set up the other rule that I've set up is a very similar selector, the same selector, but the rule is the host PID, host IPC, host network needs to be set to false to ensure that the container is not using any of the host's resources to be able to actually run whatever it does. So not is not able to intermingle with the host. It creates a new network namespace, IPC, PID namespace, right? So that's basically what we want to run it with. So I'm going to create the security uh, parameters here. So I'm just going to say kubectl create type an f and if you see kubectl get cpol you will see that we have a bunch of r and now if I run my insecure pod definition which has which is of course violating a lot of this you will see that it has host ipc set to true host pid set to true uh, and it also has it doesn't have the non root run as non root right so that's also a problem so let's run this and you will see that it should fail sorry it's not working it failed because you don't you had host ipc host pid it is running as root uh, so sorry you need to set it as must run as non root now before we proceed i'm going to also apply our mutations so we have two mutating policies so we have a memory limit policy for the same selector approach that we have. So every any any workload that runs in the prod namespace will only be restricted to 256 meg. That's our say that's our policy that we have. And we are any workload that runs in the prod namespace needs to have an image pool policy set to always, right? So that's basically mutation. So we are going to mutate our requests, right? So we're going to add our mutations. So kubectl get cpol, you will see that we have a lot more policies that we have. 
Now, if I do secure pod, you will see that it creates the pod, the previously insecure pod we are now enforcing. So if you actually do kubectl describe pod secure flask namespace prod, you will see that we have it. You see that it automatically added memory limits to my pod. This is the mutation and it's just pulling the image now. So it's a fresh image pull. So you actually added the fresh image pull. It added all those things. And of course, you will see that all of the other definitions are set to be as we have done it, right? So you actually have ensured that the policy is enforced. The policy can be mutated. The policy can be set to generate. You have all of those things that you can do with Kyverno. If you like that video, you should consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you want the best quality education for AppSec, Cloud Native Security, Kubernetes, DevSecOps, Threat Modeling, and a constantly updated library of amazing courses with amazing hands-on labs, you should get a subscription for AppSecEngineer.com. Subscriptions are available for both individuals and teams of any size that you can access on appsecengineer.com. Please check us out.